Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export For You and welcome to part 148 of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister. So it's time to make the Refiner Curse Breaking Book. Yes. Anything else? Yes. Nothing important. So, we finally made it. Finally completed it. So, using all the cooperation of everybody in the castle, we gathered all the information we needed, we gathered all the inf materials we needed, we analyzed it, and we've been guided to this answer. This final compiled book. The Refiner Curse Breaking Book. This will allow us to save the gods, Fia and Pariah, from the taboo weapons they're sealed in. Amaro! Avaro, <laughs> there's no time to be reveling in gladness that we've reveling in glory that we've gotten all the information together. これで状況の整理は済んだんだ。これからどう行動するのか、みんなに説明する必要があるだろう。So now's the time we explain to everyone what's necessary since we've gotten everything in order. You're right. This isn't a time to be lamenting over what people did in the past or our solution to it. But still we finally figured it out. We managed to turn around this desperate situation. Isn't it about natural to revel in that a little? So, taking the book in hand, we walk to the next place. So, where we're going next is a gathering of all of uh, the allies, and we talk about how we can save our gods. Okay, Avaro and Deet too. So, did you figure out a way to save her father? Yep, we got it investigated. So we've gotten a grip on how the castle was made from beginning to end. <laughs> Alright, great. So everything's all set to go. So everybody's got a bright expression on their face, except Mikshuana, who has a sharp look to her. Well then, let's confirm something. So, if we understand how the taboos are created, that means that the two of us could bring such weapons into the world as well. Is that not mistaken? Well, she's pretty wary about these sort of things. And we're not going to be allowed to trick her here. If we say we are able to make these sort of things, we're probably going to be under Maz Turia's watch. Quite besides the fact that it was necessary to save these gods. Well, Mas isn't going to let it slip, is it? Is he? 
And Mikshuana is a dutiful angel. We'll do her part. Deeds first, he says no. To him, it's too much. Even if he does understand how it's made, he definitely doesn't have the amount of magic very needed for it. So, people who don't have enough magic power can't make it? Yeah. It's not that he can't put everything together on a mechanical level, but from the very beginning, it's the territory of mages. What's it, what were they're called in this day and age are engineers. Since they hold magic power, since they can read the flow of magic, there's a part into which they can step that it is absolutely necessary for this part of the construction for the technique. So, Deedhelm has good eyes, a good sense, and he knows, has all the knowledge, but he doesn't have enough magic power. If he goes to labyrinths or ruins, he can analyze things and fix them up, but to make things from scratch, is, well, to him it's the same as not being able to do anything. Very well then. Mikshuan understands. So, those magicians of the great past, having as deep a knowledge as they did. Oh. No, now he's not talking about the darker finers back then. He's talking about the magicians of the past that build labyrinths all throughout the continent. In any case, they were deeply knowledgeable as well. So, in other words, Deetum wouldn't be able to make labyrinths. And with regard to these labyrinths, if people without knowledge entered into them, they'd be drawn into a twisted world and typically they come out much worse for wear for having entered into that kind of territory. Hmm. I don't know why I've all needed to dwell on that point, really. Anyway, Mikshana goes on. In that case, the engineer hero that does possess the proper amount of magic power, Avaro, could build one of these. Yes, he could prepare a vessel to become a weapon. And if he put in a core that could move it, yes, he could. He could put it all together and activate it, yes. Although he absolutely won't. Taking a god and using it as a tool, just thinking of it is... Well... Just thinking of it is beyond foolish. Understood. My gratitude for answering my questions. Oh, well, it looks like we might end up being uh, surveilled by Mars Terria. But no matter how he answered, it can't be changed that 
He does know how to make these taboo weapons now. Well, it's fine. Let's not worry about it now. Even if Avaro is put under watch for the rest, for who knows how long, he has no plans on ever creating one anyway. All right. Let's explain what we were able to, in what we understood out of our investigation. To start with the conclusion, if we can save them, we are able to release the gods that have been sealed in magic stones. So, saying so directly, everybody's got this happy look again. But there's a little more we need to explain. And everybody gets a bit of a dark look as Avaro gets into it. But the way to release a god that we've come to understand here, there's a certain process to the method, and there's going to be dangers attached to it. Well, at least in Pariah's case. So, the first person who reacts with a flinch to that is, as expected, the most, con most closely connected to Pariah, Fia. So, we found a way to fa save her father, but it's very dangerous. But it doesn't apply to Fia? Alright, in Fia's case, as long as we don't make any mistakes in the process, there isn't going to be any danger. According to the answers that we've found out. So, looking at everybody's face in turn, Avaro explains the absolutely necessary three-step process. Ha <laughs> Okay. First, we need to release Pariah from the seals. And that doesn't apply to Fia. The castle is already... well... Anybody can enter or exit the castle already. So the seals on the weapon Pariah is in apparently keep people out as well as keeping him from moving. Yeah, well, in any case, more than anything else, if we can't get into the weapon, the process cannot continue. And number two, we need to configure the settings on the emplacements that are driving Pariah insane. We can do that to Fia in the same way, but in the case of Guadalcuna Castle, it's simply a matter of making sure that Fia, making it so that Fia won't go crazy, be crazed like he is. And the final third step is to destroy the magic stones and release the god that way. In Pariah's case, there is one more step, though. As far as the explanation goes, that's how it is. So with the conclusion of that simple explanation, Everybody has their own expressions as they think it over. For example, Fia, as she thinks it over, she drops her head down in that the thinker stance, so to speak. And she mumbles her thoughts. It's not a particularly complicated process from what she can tell. 
アバロ隊長が理解しやすいように噛み砕いて話しているのは差し置いてもそこまで難しくは思えない That's right Leaving aside the fact that Avaro explained it in a very easy to understand way, it's not all that complicated. So, why hasn't anybody able to put this into practice up to now? That's a proper question to be asking. In the long history of these taboo weapons, why hasn't this method ever been tested? And it's a very simple and sad answer to that. In the original schematics, this method was not recorded. It said that there was no way to save a god who has been sealed. So even the people who constructed it didn't know, or rather, or perhaps didn't care enough. To think of a way to release the gods. So, we've grasped the construction of the castle and analyzed the analyzed it all the way down to the base principles. And finally, figured out a way to save them. So, having come to the God's Haze and gathered all this information, we finally arrived at a method here. The proof is all over the long history of these things. Once a god's been sealed inside a weapon and made into a taboo existence, there's nothing to do to them but to destroy them. That's what's said. Yeah, as we said, destroying the weapon together with the god was the only way. Yep. The creators of these weapons from the beginning had no intention of saving the gods after they were done with them. Those humans who created these weapons, the gods and spirits they captured, they planned to use to death. Just use them until they're dry. And the, the construction is actually pretty redundant on that point. Deetim's face gets more and more scary as he explains. They had no intention of letting them escape. Always, until they died, they would be driven to be of use, would be controlled to be of use to these humans. Always until they died? Yes, saying it properly, even if they were to want to die, it wouldn't, they wouldn't be allowed to. Kind of feel to it. This is connected to step two of our process. The emplacements that praise the god. The castle is fundamentally driven from the magic stones at the core. It draws power out and delivers power to the rest of the castle.
for that purpose. The human magic power that flows through the castle binds in the god and controls him. So as long as the magic stones are functioning, it, it will always eat into the god from the outside. And so, the gods that have been sealed can't get out. Yes, that's it exactly. So these humans, who demanded freedom, took the magic power that they received from the gods, took advantage of it, and turned it back against those gods in a rebellion. Although you may have come to realize it on our journey here. If we sum it up in an explanation here. This is a magical form of control and brainwashing. So in this container we call the castle. They prepare it. And then they put into it their power source. With this, the magicians can manipulate it as a weapon. So this weapon isn't all that different in its construction from a golem. Well, outside of the fact that the core that provides the energy comes from a source much more powerful than a regular mage, that is, a god or a spirit. Jeez. To try and take control of a god like that, Humans are so greedy. True, those people are just crazy. You two are both humans, I think. Yeah, that was Rishu and Kisner literally bad-mouthing humans when they are, in fact, humans. Yeah, well, Mikio points it out and the two of them look at each other and uh, well, they get that oops look on their faces. So in order to release our gods, we need to destroy these magic stones that have become the core. But, what's going to become a problem then is, as Deed said, The way that these humans have set to unscrupulously use the gods actually takes advantage of their attempts to escape or their attempts to die. So if you try to destroy the magic stones at the core and free the god in that way, those humans set up a trap that would pour into the god a polluted form of magic. So with a blood contact kind of thing, the god's consciousness will be lost as the magic power coming into them pollutes them from starts to pollute them and what they do at that point is they lose their mind and start indiscriminately destroying everything around them that is that sounds a lot like what pariah's state is at the current time. Right. 
So as I've always said, the conditions that will cause this magic pollution to enter in them are not limited to the destruction of the magic stones. If the sealed god attempts without the permission of the humans to break free of the seal by their own power or simply to die can gods just up and die if they want to? Well, I guess so. In any case, if the god attempts to do either of those two things break free or die in those conditions too this poisonous magic power will run through them. So that Pariah has accumulated all this power through the Fuchsia faith may actually have contributed to the way he's lost his mind now. <laughs> so that is what it means to use a god to a to a use a god to the very end. And that's why in our process we have steps taken to prevent this magic pollution from taking hold. So what controls the flow of magic is the magic language. It's an engineer's technique. Evora says that on this journey with the Gra Lacuna Castle, since he's grown so much since before he met Fia, Avaro can take and overwrite the flow of this and overwrite this magic language. So in the center, if we go to the place where the magic stones are, then Avaro can change the flow of magic there. Alright, that is the second step in our process. The resetting of the emplacements that are crazing the god. Okay, but can they can a god still be saved if, like her father, they've already got this bad magic running through their body? We can save them. What we need to do to save Pariah from that state is to pull that magic that poison-like magic out of him. And this is connected to the faith power. It lacked as a kind of automatic purification. Or the faith that's been the faith that reaches Pariah will automatically purify it once he's cut off. So, if we raise Pariah's power with everybody's prayers, that's a necessary step here. Everybody's prayers. All right. The sentiments of... The uh, loving sentiments towards Pariah will have an effect of purifying the poison. Because he's still in the state of being sealed inside of the weapon, the magic poison is still overriding this purification process. But if we can release him from it, the faith ought to, well, run the purification and save him. So in order to get him to regain his right mind, 
We need to cut him out from that thing. <laughs> All right, that's, that's step three of our process necessary for Pariah. The destruction of the magic stones. Oh, here we go. That's, uh, that's the final step after the step three of our process. So in other words, this purification will happen after step three for Pariah, but it, it's not something we necessarily are doing. No, I think I have that wrong. In Faya's case, this polluting magic isn't running through her. So she hasn't lost her mind and the danger is, is prevented before it starts. So of our says, because it's us, we can save Pariah. With my engineer's, engineer's techniques and everybody's cooperation. And so, without concluding words, everybody's hope is everybody's face lights up with hope. But the final part of the conversation isn't done. And that is the danger in saving Pariah. The first one to notice is Kisner. Right. According to the conversation up to this point, it doesn't seem that dangerous, but... To sum it up, the danger lies in getting to that central portion where Pariah is. Isn't that right? Exactly. In order to enter into there, just thinking about entering into there, you feel that shoot of fear through you, don't you? Yeah, that is pretty dangerous. So everybody at the same time thinks of, well, that time we faced off with at Pariah's weapon. So it's not merely the seal of the magic stones. That whole weapon can't move because of the shackles binding it down. Just confronting him there, you feel this gut level fear rising from the depths of your being. So Pariah is not in a proper state of mind. Differently from Fia, the magic pollution has already taken hold of him. And there's nobody like Walakuna Castle here managing him. So since he's lost his mind like that, perhaps because he's lost his mind like that, the defensive mechanisms of that weapon are uh, are working. And before even entering into the inner portion, we have to break the shackles that bind him down. Although Avaro can break that with his blood. Those shackles that are binding down Pariah's weapon are from the elves. Another barrier. So it's like those ropes that bound down the castle while we were in Fala Realos. And once we've entered into the interior of the weapon, there are also going to be the things that attack us. These are the defensive mechanisms there to eradicate intruders. We need to take care of those as we make our way to the center. 
内部には外部の者には開くことができない仕掛け扉もあるようだがまあこっちには適任者がいる心配ねえだろう According to the data we have, there will be doors set up on the way in that will prevent outsiders from entering. But amongst us, we also have a, we still have a suitable person, so we don't need to worry about that. Deed looks at Avaro. Yep, this is in regards to Avaro's human blood. So the first step of the process is breaking the barriers that are binding that weapon down. So first there's the breaking of the barrier on the outside, getting through the door set from the inside and then once we receive once we arrive there breaking the magic stones and making the poison stop flow all right Fia's remembered all of it <laughs> so basically Avaro has within him all the abilities that let him deal with this huh Well, yeah, that's how it turns out. This did turn out to be a crazy set of coincidences, didn't it? Perhaps it's fate, or maybe better called, a connection that drove him here. But, Fia, the one who finally saves Pariah will be you. That magic pollution working like poison. The effects it has will have to be pulled out by the prayers of others conveyed to him through faith. And that's why, Fia, you need to deliver that faith to him. Hmm, all right. She'll deliver everyone's feelings to him. So, we have a look at Fia's smile, and then we sum up the conversation. All right, everybody. Have you got the process in your heads? With this method, we can release Fia from Tiavu, and it won't be dangerous, but with regard to Pariah, we don't know what could happen. In Avaro's mind, a certain man's face floats to the top. That highly calculating man isn't going to just stand back quietly as this goes on. The barrier that's been protecting the holy grounds has been dropped. Gaidal certainly isn't going to let this opportunity pass. Okay, Avaro, as a half-elf, has particular characteristics that allow him to pull everything through. But, of course, it's not Avaro by himself. He doesn't have that much power. In order to get to the central portion, there are certainly going to be a lot of problems. A lot of uh, obstacles that arise. So, with everybody working together, let's say Pariah. If it's us, we can do it. Bam! Whew. Well, that's something, isn't it? Whoops.
Mr. Mary Rakuna. Hey, there's a Rakuna at the end, just like Wa Rakuna. Hmm, anyway, let's see. There's no mining and no herb gathering. But there are rewards. From this we can conclude, once we go there we are never coming back to Avaro's workshop and crafting things again. But there will be another map afterwards where we might use these things. Like an elixir, a phoenix, three phoenix downs, and ten large healing potions. Yeah, there's definitely a map afterwards. Okay, enemy list. Black Bond Warlock Gaidal. Earth Archmage, Water Archmage, Fire Archmage, Wind Archmage, Evil Magician. Oh, some of those rotten are undead archers. An elf, warlock. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Well, hammer angel thing, healer angel thing, bondage angel, soul gosh, refiner remake, and the remainder omitted. So there are going to be a lot of enemies we'll be seeing there. Whoops. Alright, so thanks for watching, and next time we're going to go through that map. Just so you know, I have every intention of pulling it in one episode, no matter how long it runs, so... Well, see you next time.